He fought on the Dave channel, didn't he, for a million pound a fight twice. Then he got the Tony Bellew fights. So as far as I'm concerned, and he broke down in both of them camps, didn't he? Because his body was held together by glue, but it, he masked over that by putting daily videos out of him training for like 10 seconds on Instagram and Twitter. And everybody bought into it, didn't they? They all bought into the David A from, from you know, I mean, his last world title win were nine years before ago against John Ruiz and Val UF. They were his last title wins before he fought Bellew. I mean, he'd done nothing in years. He'd been out nearly five years and, you know, it left a bad taste in my mouth, David A, walking off into the sunset with millions. He had two million from two fights on Dave and he made another eight, nine million from, from the from the Bellew fight, so he had over 10 million quid from from what? From from conning us on social media, so in my opinion David A is a con man and a whore, money whore I'm not saying he's a whore as a person, but money whore Condas all, condas If you don't like it David, come see me, pull me about it but you fucking rip fans off Porky is Coogan Cassius a good laugh or an arse licker as he always appears to be up Eddie or Frank's arsehole Joan in Nottingham. God, we've got a lot of ones from women. Uh, yeah, I know he's always been alright when I've seen Coogan. Look, if he starts giving Frank and Eddie an hard time, he's not going to get access. And if, you t if Frank Warren and Eddie Earn get rid of him, how would he get a living? If they say tell their fighters that they're not going to give him access. How would Coogan make a living without Eddie or Frank? He has got to keep them happy. Think about that for a minute. Frank and Eddie get rid of him. What does he do? What's he do? He's going to say yes Frank, no Frank. Yes Eddie, no Eddie, isn't he? It's just business, isn't it? He's not fortunate, is he, like me? Where I can say fuck off. I can say Dennis, fuck off. Make your own way home from Leeds and I'm driving home in your car. So I did. That's just one of our four arts. It is what it is, isn't it? But I'm a bit highly strung and I'm, I've got a different temperament to Coogan. Coogan's actually a nice kid. I've met him a few times. He's a nice kid. He's likeable. He's an hard worker. He's very patient and He's alright, I know he's had a fallout with Prince Patel, but it must have been something bad for Coogan to lose his drag like that. But he's an hard worker, so you've got to give him credit, and he's set the, set the standard, hasn't he? I, I don't want my channel to be like his, though, so don't get... People don't need to be confused in his channel with, with mine, because we're leagues different, we're totally different. But... Porky, do you feel a prick telling Dennis Hobson to sign Mark Efron as he's been beat? You know fuck all about boxing. Kevin in Bogner. <laughs> no, I don't, because when I told him to sign Mark Efron, he went 9 and 0. I think he had another, what, over, he had well over 10, 12 fights before he got beat. And he got beat by world-class fighting, in my opinion. So... And I think he's fighting it wrong weight as well at that weight. But, you know, he'll learn from that. He'll learn from that. But no, I don't. And like I said, Mark Efron, he does tickets, he's exciting. And he had a low profile. You know, he, he didn't have a massive profile at the time. And we had a meeting and I said, I think you should sign Mark Efron. He was one of them. The other one what was a girl. Oh, Jane Couch recommended. I forgot her name now. Is it Stacy? Somebody? I forgot her name. I forgot her name, but. And obviously, Dennis didn't listen to me. And in fact, April 2015, when I first started with Dennis, I said, 
your stable's weak, you need to sign people now, and then in 2020 reap the benefits. Well, he now agrees with me now. So, and he's supposed to be an expert. But it all costs money, doesn't it? But like I said, we're working better as a team now, and everybody's listening to each other. Dennis has got a good team behind him. Porky, was Ruiz a bigger upset win versus Joshua than Leon Spinks? Sean in Rotherham? No, Leon Spinks were a gold medalist at the Olympics and it were Muhammad Ali. Ruiz wasn't a gold medalist at the Olympics and Joshua is not Muhammad Ali. So no, it's not a bigger upset than Leon Spinks beating Ali. Question 15, so sorry about that Sean, because I know you've emailed before and you're a big Joshua fan. Question 15, Porky, do you think Callum Smith is any good? Carl in Cardiff. I think jury's still out on Callum Smith, really. Who's his best three wins? George Groves, who had a bad shoulder injury, and he was forced into the fight, and he had a lot of miles on the clock. Rocky Fielding, who went on to win a regular belt down the line after Callum beat him. And that and Dam, who was not done note for nine, ten year, and he's a career middleweight. So Callum Smith has been wrapped in more wool than than you put on cotton buds at the cotton bud factory. <laughs> was Oliver McCall any good, Porky? Lee Coventry dropped Mike Tyson in sparring and knocked out the next Lewis and had a life and death with Frank Bruno, so yeah, I'd say Oliver McCall's good. Number 17, why do you big up New Age Podfather and Boxing Asylum all the time? Porky, you fat mess. Gareth in West Ham. Cheers, Gareth. Uh, I enjoy listening to New Age Pod and Boxing Asylum. I used to listen to Boxing Coalition as well, but I don't know if that's still going now. So you can't please everybody, Gareth. Keep listening though. 18. Do you rate Shane McGuigan as a trainer, Porky? Steve in Tamworth? Yeah, I do. I think he's uh, up there with Mark Tibbs and uh, Haroon Headley. I like him as a trainer, as trainers that I do rate. Just because Haroon Headley ain't got a world champion, don't mean to say that, or a world ranked fight, don't mean to say he's not a good trainer. I just, I can listen to trainers and I can tell if they're any good. It's just a knack I've got, I think. Porky, was Herbie Hyde any good as a heavyweight? If so, why did Barry Hearn cash him in in the first defence? That's, oh, he's got, and he's got two questions here. Nathan from Northamptonshire. Er, uh, Porky was... Maybe I don't know if he goes in heavyweight. Maybe I don't know if he heavyweight. I don't know, he beat Michael Bent, didn't he? Oh, what other one he beat? Forgot now. He won it a couple of times, didn't it? WBO. What WBO even recognised then? I don't think it were. But, yeah, Barry Earn cashed him in, didn't he, against Riddick Bowe in Vegas. He wouldn't do that with Joshua for Wilder though, would he? Hey. So was ABI had any good? Well, he won. A, he was a two-time heavyweight champion at world. I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? But did he beat any world champions along the way? He beat Michael Bent, didn't he? That was one of them. I'm not sure what other ones he beat. Porky, why do you always big up Evander Holyfield? As an all-time great heavyweight, he was shit and had ten losses, and lost to Lennox and James Tony, a career middleweight. Porky, so you know utter shit about boxing. Fucking same person. Uh, why do I big up Evander Holyfield? God, should I even need to explain that Evander Holyfield? Are you, are you away with fairies? Hey. Evander Holyfield has got 16 wins 
16 wins over world champions, the same as Muhammad Ali. Let me say that again. Evander Holyfield has got 16 wins over world champions, 16, the same as Ali. Tyson Fury has two. Vladimir and Steve Cunningham. David Hay has six. Tony Bellew has three. A shot Hay twice and cleverly who we moved up to Cruiser. He's got 16 guys from his division. And the 10 losses, I dare tell you that out of them 10 losses, I wonder how many of them were against world champions. So look at the guys he's been in with. Hey, look at the guys he's been in with. Holyfield. Oh my God. Hey, Jesus. See? It's fucking, I can't believe that one. Porky, you have Adam Smith in your top 15 mel helmets every month, but yet he's a nice guy, Adam. I met him at the O2 once in 2013. Tim in Berkshire. Well, why don't you rent a room out to him at your home, mate? Eh? Why don't you get in touch with Adam Smith at Sky and say, Adam, it's Tim from Berkshire. I've got a spare bedroom at my house. Why don't you come and stop a couple of nights a week and we can talk boxing and be bezies. Jesus, get alive. Porky, how come you went to Stig's local pub, pub and had him on your channel when he is a casual? As all he's going on about all the time are the Furies who fight utter bums. Why is this? Colin in Durham. Uh, I don't know Colin. Uh, it's a long way for me to drive down there to Surrey. And the next time I go to London I will probably call and see Stig. And probably take him out for a, a, a bite. Because that's what I do, isn't it? But, uh, Stig, he's trying his best to be hardcore, but I suppose you could call him... I don't even know if he's a casual, because he doesn't watch every show, does he? So, but he's a Fury fan, isn't he? And he wants the best for Tyson and Yui. So you have to leave him to that, don't you? It's what he believes. It. He does go on about it. That group of them on Twitter... On and on and on and on and on they go and some of them even ring me don't they and you know and I give them the opportunity and they hang up don't they I had one ring me over there and a Wivel number I said come on then what do you want to speak about you yeah. you've got your you've got your moment now you know I finally picked the phone up to you because I never picked the phone up to with held numbers, but uh, this particular day I picked the phone to a with held number. So, but, uh, but anyway, number 21, oh sorry, 22, oh no, 23, we've just done that. Porky, you think you're rock hard driving about in your car, I have a motorbike that's faster. Do you reckon Tommy Coyle is finished at elite level? Shiraz in Doncaster. <laughs> uh, I think I'm rock hard driving about in a car. Well, how am I going to get about? Walk. Tell you what, Shiraz, I'll get bus. Would that make you better if I get bus? Should I get bus? I'll put a car back on Cunningsburg, Cunningsburg cars at Cunningsburg. Put it on pitch. And get bus pass, make you happy, eh? And what else did you say? Is Tommy Coyle what? Do I reckon Tommy Coyle's finished at elite level? Fucking hell. Did Tommy Coyle ever get to elite level? Did I tell you Tommy Coyle would get knocked out against Chris Algieri? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Tommy Coyle's never been elite level, but he's got an all action style. And he's always blowing bubbles up Eddie's arse. Yes, Eddie, no Eddie. So he's always he's always in shape and raring to go, isn't he? So he's going to get chances. And I like Tommy Coyle, but he's never been elite level. Elite level. I reckon Curtis Woodhouse beats him on a good day. Twenty-four. Porky, do you feel that now Eddie is Mr. Humble? He will cancel the twenty quid pay-per-views. And charge 15 quid and sack off Stubbub. 
Jamie and Chesterfield. No pay-per-views are 20 quid and who's to say that he won't put it up to 25 quid for the Ruiz fight. Trust me, because if Joshua gets beaten and he decides to quit, they'll want to get they want to wring as much money out as they can. So look at it like this, it might be going up even more. In fact, I think it is £21, isn't it, if you book off at phone. I think it is, you'll have to check that. You have to check that one. I think it's more than £20 actually. From Jamie and Chester. 25. Hi Russ. Who would you see as the best three opponents for Eubank next fight? Uh, Christopher Eubank or Junior I'm assuming. His best, his next three opponents. Well I know for a fact that uh, Eddie Hearn is trying to get a, get a deal with him. Because I've heard back. Um, they're trying the best. I'd say John Ryder because they're similar weight aren't they? They're both really not super middles are they? John Ryder I'd like to see him fight Billy Joe rematch I thought Billy Joe just shaded that by a, a very very close fight that you know that first one but they both got better since then haven't they? I'd like to see Eubank fight I'd like to see DeGale come back and fight him because there's a bit of beef there, isn't there? There's a bit of intense beef there, so I'd like to see that. Do you see Warrington beating Gary Russell or Oscar Valdez from Jay Coles? These might be, these questions might be copied off Twitter if you've not put your names, uh, if you've not put where you're from, so the, these ones are probably copied off Twitter, but I think I did put on Twitter, can you send them all to emails? Uh, do I think, do I think Josh Warrington beats Gary Russell and Oscar Valdez in Leeds? I don't think he beats them in America, no. I think it does something to a fighter when they fight abroad. I don't know what. Clinton Woods didn't like going abroad. Frotch wasn't keen either. So. What next for Kel Brook, Porky? Desi and Altrincham? I think he needs my doctor's number. Er. Uh, er. Uh, uh, Brew, uh, Brew Mill. Claremont at Brew Mill. I think he needs my doctor's number. So for an agastric band, Kelbrook. Now I don't know what's next for Kelbrook. I don't know. I don't know what's next. I think that uh, Amir Khan beats Billy Dib and calls Kel out. He's probably waiting for that fight. And then you get out of boxing, I think. They're hanging on for a card fight, aren't they? Amir's got him where he wants him, hasn't he, really? 28. Porky, why does Dennis Hobson have you around him? As I just want to know, as it's not as if you're educated, is it? David in Mexborough? Is that David down here? Is that you, Tony? Eh? Why does Den have me around him? I don't know. Probably. I don't know. All the time they spat me, done me out. And some right fallouts, I I had him in a chokehold in Bulgaria. He bit me here, didn't he? And I got a carpet burn on my head. Punched me here in the solar plaque. We had a right battle. Pissed up, weren't we? I don't know. Uh, it's not a love hate relationship. I like Dennis, don't I? Dennis falls out with a lot of people though, doesn't he? It's, it's not, it's no secret, he does fall out with people. Uh, I fall out with people though all the time and I'm a nice person. I don't know, in boxing can get you falling out with people, can't it? It's one of them sports, isn't it, where you can just, you can have a good friendship with people and something can happen and you can all fall out. It's, sometimes I say things on this channel here and I think, God, that's not going to go down well. And it done. 
but this is everybody's trying to pull their own little moves aren't they all the time and I don't know I don't know why he has me around you'd have to ask Dennis that ask Dennis that email him email Dennis uh, email Dennis email if you want Dennis's email email me and I'll give you Dennis's email and you can email him how's about that Porky Corner at mail dot com not Porky's Venus it's Porky we know us Porky Corner at mail dot com not capitals email me if you want Dennis's email and uh, David in Mexico and I'll give you his email and you can ask Dennis and he'll answer you he'll probably tell you that I am loyal I don't owe him a penny and I'm not a taker and I'm big hearted, he'll probably say them four things 29 Porky, are you every woman's dream or worst nightmare in South Yorkshire? Jenny in Rotherham is that a proposal Jenny? am I every, every woman's dream? Uh, I don't know really I leave hair in the sink if I have a shave uh, I never make bed, I leave wet towels on bed I leave I sleep commando, I leave all my clothes on the floor, I'm untidy. I fidget a lot. Uh, every now and then I might go on a bender or go missing for two or three days. Uh, that's why nobody can that's why no I've never been able to keep a woman in it, I suppose. So if 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 you wanna if you wanna have a bit of a bit of if you want me to fettle your nettles, Jenny, get in touch and uh, we can, I'm sure we can arrange it. <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, I'm happy at the moment. But uh, it's a strange question, that. Very strange question. Porky, are you and Steffi Bull ever going to settle your beef in the ring? Ted in Leeds. If Steffi's got beef with me, he knows where I live. He can come and see me, we'll get at it in the street. We don't need to go in a ring, do we? He comes on his own, we'll get at it. What's the worst he can do to me? Knock me out? Look, ears bit now, teeth knocked out, guns put to me head, get in that pit, gun put to me head. Somebody told me to get in a pit in a garage when I was 20, 29, 29, 30 year old, 30 year old, get in that pit. You know, it's a joke, but you don't know it's a joke, do you? Uh, been kidnapped, been knocked out in jail. Boom! Paul Walter back at head. So, am I going to be bothered about Steffi Ball? No, no, not at all. No. Not at all. But like I said, Steffi knows what I'm going to be on Friday. See if he comes to the show. If he wants to pull me, he can pull me and we'll get at it. No messing about. He would want shooting his mouth off. Trying to get me to go to other people's gyms and that. Just come and knock on my fucking door, you ginger con. Can you see Louise beating Wilder as easy as he did AJ? Who would you pick as your favourite? I'd pick Wilder to beat Louise. That's some Adam at a Toxita. 32. Do you expect Kell Brook to be in any meaningful fights again? It seems he's stuck. His stock has dropped dramatically, and Khan is too yellow to fight him. Danny in Barnsley. Uh, I personally, right, I've been on record as saying I don't think Kell Brook's the fighter he were when he beat Porter. It's been stop, start, stop, start. He's had two bad injuries, two long layoffs. He's had a change of trainer. I'm not saying John Fuchs isn't a good trainer, uh, but I just think it's been. I don't know, and I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. But. Uh, can't tap me anyway, can you? But it does help if beakers don't leak. I don't know, but I think that Kelbrook 
Something needs to happen with Kel Brook soon, doesn't it? Because he's just not going anywhere, is he? Number 33, Eddie Hearn says people are jealous of him and want him to do badly and that people are unhappy with their own lives and should be happy like he is all day. What is your thoughts on this porky? Malcolm in Hornchurch at AJ Fanning bracket. Uh, well, Eddie Hearn, right? Eddie Hearn's never had to... Eddie Hearn's happy all day, isn't he? Well, look, Eddie Hearn went to a private school. His dad's a multi-millionaire. He's had everything done all his life. All his life. His dad's an accountant, but cottoned on to Steve Davis, a, bo a, sn a, a snooker player. And then snooker got on television, didn't it? And so his dad signed snooker players and then boxers. So they've had it easy all their life, the Hearns, haven't they? His dad's a genius. I like him. Eddie's a spoilt brat. He says he's a silver spoon boy, but he turns spoon gold. By doing what? He's never had a fight in his life. He talks like he's a gangster. I've heard stories about Eddie Hearn having a session in Essex with certain people. And I've heard what they say about him when he goes home. Oh yeah, have I heard that. So Eddie's not Mr. Popular, is he? Do you know what I mean? So... But what can you do? How I look at it is this. He's a good boxing promoter. He can sell Santa Adams. But he's not in the ring, is he? Taking the punches. Problem I have with Eddie is this. He gives it the all. This is my new best friend. And then when that person is not needed, he's on mute because he don't want him ringing him all the time. He mutes them. That's what he does. He just mutes you. We did it with Dave Allen. We done it with Frotch. He mutes you. Don't answer your calls. That's what they do. It's the business doing it. It's like meat traders, isn't it? It's like trading pigs at a slaughterhouse, isn't it? They've got to be slaughtered sooner or later. The pigs have to go to meat market, don't they? Tommy Coyle went to meat market, didn't he, against Algeria. That'll be him done now. Rocky Fielding went to meat market, didn't he? Good old Rocky Fielding, who were in prize fighter as a substitute. Fucking hell. He ended up winning a British and... and, and did he win a couple of others and, and he, he won a WBA regular against the guy who battered Paul Smith? Oh, end of day, Eddie Earns a businessman, isn't he? But I have a problem with, I have a problem with bullies and show-offs and cocky bastards. And Eddie's that, isn't he? So I've just sent Eddie, uh, Four Viagras today. Do you think you'll use them? I, sat, I thought he looked a bit stressed out and that, and I'm hearing that he's not getting it up. So I've sent him some Viagras, and uh, hopefully that'll cheer him up. So, alright. But, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? Eddie Hearn has never had any problem in his life with money. And of course you're going to walk around fucking being happy all the time. The people who say that are usually millionaires who have thing, have, who've had things given. And he's not a self-made million. He's not self-made like his dad, is he? Or Frank Warren or Dennis Hobson. They're self-made millionaires, aren't they? Nobody's give them anything. And he's had it giddy, man. He? Like Callas Sowland's had it giddy. And that's why they don't get respect. That's why they try and make out that the uh, actually Callum's not a bad kid, but Eddie and Callum make out they're one at chaps, but they're never going to be accepted by boxers in that sort of conversation, are they? Yeah, you'll have people like Cal Yafai and you know and Joshua and people like that, Callum Smith, 
you know, they're all going to say Eddie's best thing since sliced bread because they're delivering them thousands of pounds and some, in some cases millions of pounds.